I have already explained the importance of learning Docker right now for every single person in IT. And that was in this video. And after that, I have brought up the most comprehensive Docker course available free online on the internet and on YouTube, which is right here, seven and a half hours with a project filled with a lot of Docker information that will take you from zero to hero. But all what we have explained used to use a single Docker host. So that means all the containers are on the same server or on the same virtual machine. Now, what if I have an environment where I need more than that? I need more than one Docker host and I need to orchestrate or manage containers across these different virtual machines and also ensure that there is networking and communication and governance and scaling and all that feature. How can I centrally orchestrate and manage and automate the deployment, the placement of containers following their health, scaling and adding containers when required and shrinking the number down when not needed. And that is Docker Swarm. In this short video, I'm going to introduce to you what Docker Swarm is. Please consider subscribing to the channel to benefit from the videos that we are launching. Activate the notification to get notifications about every single video that we launch. And please consider giving us a like and share so the video can reach and benefit more people. Okay, so understanding containers, as we adopt them and the number of containers increases, we cannot rely on Docker Compose and on Docker Run. We need a tool that is going to deploy the containers for us and it's going to monitor the containers and if one fails or is not performing or responding then it's going to replace it as the load increases it's going to scale and as the load decreases it's going to shrink so what is that tool because a human being cannot do that when we get to the hundreds and thousands of containers it becomes a problem and that's why we need an orchestration and management tool and here we are going to do an overview on docker swarm which justifies a full course but this is just the introduction so we understand that there are other tools and we don't stop at docker compose only so as the number of containers increase so far we have learned about docker run and docker compose and both are having a scope of one docker host they cannot scale beyond or they cannot control containers beyond a single docker host but this is a manual process so Questions, if you are going to heavily adopt microservices and we're going to scale the environment, then how do we automate container lifecycle? The creation, replacement, changes, deletion of containers. And how can we scale microservices on demand? How can we start to control containers in different hosts? Because this host has limitations of CPU and memory. When we hit that limit, then we have to use other Docker hosts. Who is going to take care of that? Who is going to scale based on traffic? How can we recreate containers when they fail? And also how can we update services without downtime? And how can we allow and track communication with, among containers that are now spread across multiple Docker hosts? And more to that, how can we control where the containers are deployed? I have some servers or some Docker hosts that have more resources than others. Then I need to ship the containers into that one in order to balance the utilization across all Docker hosts. How can I do that? And this brings to us one orchestration tool provided by Docker Inc, which is Docker Swarm. So it's a Docker orchestration and management tool. What is it exactly? It is an advanced Docker engine feature for managing a cluster of Docker daemons. So you have a cluster of Docker hosts and Docker Swarm is going to be the umbrella that will manage the daemons and control resources on all of them. It's a native clustering and orchestration tool built into Docker. So it's part of your Docker engine, even if it's not started by default. And the swarm is mainly, I mean, it comes from the world of bees or many things moving together. When the queen leaves the hive and then a lot of bees are going to follow her and then they start a new hive and so on. So a swarm of bees, now we're talking about a swarm of containers that needs to be controlled. So the Swarm is going to turn multiple Docker hosts into a single virtual Docker engine called a Swarm. It's going to use the Docker Swarm command and the Docker service command.
The architecture of the Docker Swarm relies on having one or more managers and then you have worker nodes and the worker nodes is where you are going to deploy the containers. What if I have a cluster of only one node, the manager? You can deploy containers on the manager in that case, but this is not the architecture. Usually, we should have an odd number of managers, more than one, to ensure that the control plane or the management plane is going to have at least one or two nodes functioning all the time. So the manager node will handle cluster management, including cluster state maintenance and scheduling the tasks or scheduling the containers on the worker nodes. And we can have one or more managers, odd number is recommended as we mentioned, and worker nodes are also instances of Docker engine. So you will have to install Docker engine even on the worker nodes as well. But the purpose of these worker nodes is to execute containers, is to run containers and receive communication from the manager create, delete, replace, kill, and so on. In Docker Swarm, the concept of services, tasks, and containers are new concepts that we haven't learned about before. So here, for example, I have three engine replicas. I need to create a service on worker nodes. So I have three available nodes in this case. We are showing only one Swarm manager here, but realistically, it's going to be multiple ones so let's say this is the control plane and this is one swarm manager. So I have created a service inside the manager that has three Nginx replicas. I want to create three tasks. Each task will have an Nginx container and I put all the specification of which version of the container and so on inside the task definition or the task. And then the service is going to execute the tasks on the different available worker nodes. So services are used to deploy an application image when Docker engine is in swarm mode. And the service will define a lot of things about the container, including the image, what commands to execute in the running container, what ports to expose, what are the networking details, what's the CPU and memory allocation for the container, and updating the policy on the number of replicas to create. So now we are controlling the creation of multiple containers on multiple Docker hosts that are managed as a cluster by the Swarm managers. The replicas are deployed as tasks on the worker nodes, as we mentioned, and the replicas are the containers, and tasks will run independently from each other. So this one is independent from this one, is independent from that one. And each task includes one container. Use cases when to use Docker Swarm, when you have small to medium teams or projects, so you can still use it in production if you have a small requirement because the learning curve of Swarm is much easier than something like Kubernetes, for example. So when simplicity and fast setup are important, this is also a good case, and for development, proof of concept, and lightweight production. So if you have a large scale production, Swarm is not the right choice in that case. Okay, in general, we can say use Swarm mode if you intend to use Swarm as a production runtime environment, but in small scale. Why use it? It's easy to learn. It uses the same Docker CLI and Compose native, and it has a feature of rolling updates. When we have a new version, then we can roll the new version uh, using rolling updates. And it's secure by default. There is encryption between the nodes all the time for the communication among them. And it is lightweight. So it's less resource intensive compared to Kubernetes. Of course, one would ask the question, okay, fine. Now I have Swarm, I have Kubernetes, and I have OpenShift. Which one I go for? So let's compare them. From a learning curve, easiest is Swarm and Kubernetes and OpenShift are going to be steep. Setup, very simple complex but flexible in, in case of uh, Kubernetes, and then it is very complex in case of OpenShift. Rolling updates feature is supported. Here we have more strategies for the rolling updates or for migration from one version to another, and here also we have advanced strategies plus pipelines. From a security perspective, TLS by default, this needs to set up the encryption, and this has strong default policies like RBAC and SCC. Networking, simple overlay networks between the different Docker hosts. Here we have advanced plugins for networking, and this is Kubernetes based. Storage integration, basic integration. Here we have plugins also for storage for the different services. And here we have a strong support. 
ecosystem minimal and the adoption of swarm is declining and here we have a huge ecosystem enterprise tools and ci cd in case of openshift and this is ideal for dev test and simple production here complex application and for scalable applications regulated industries and enterprises so go for swarm only if you have dev test simple production environment and you want an easier learning curve and it is encrypted by default simple networking and basic storage integration otherwise kubernetes will be the choice so this was a quick introduction to docker swarm and how to orchestrate and manage or what's the idea behind it and what do we use it for if you haven't watched the seven and a half hours full docker course that is available on our channel in youtube then the link is in the description box and if you would like to get the full version course which is more than 15 hours 15 and a half hours with 10 quizzes and six assignments and another more advanced project and it's available in 100 lectures so you don't have to scroll through a long video on the same screen then the link is also in the description and you will find a sweet discount coupon attached to it. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.